Hello everyone, my name is Dave Partner. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a Google sign in button for your app using Firebase and Bionic tool. In, in, in this tutorial, to join in, all you have to do is visit firebase.google.com and then um, hit enter on your keyboard, click on docs, click on guides, and uh, click on Google sign in. I want to show you something here in the documentation before we move on. Here in the documentation, there are two ways to, to, two things that happen or may happen when your user clicks on the button sign in with Google. It's either a pop up shows up or a redirect happens. So if a pop up shows up, the user will see a pop up on the, on their screen asking them to allow you or give you permission or give your app permission to access their Google details, Google plus details. But if it's, if it's a redirect, there will be no pop-up, but your screen entire app will redirect. The problem with redirect, I personally have found, is that on your app, it doesn't return the promise. So, um, I'll show you. So, we stick to um, the pop-up mode. So, to do the pop-up mode, that's the first one. You have to declare this variable. Just copy this line exactly. Then copy this line exactly, then copy this function exactly, and uh, there we have it. So inside here, we'll write a custom function to create a user's account after um, user's table after they have signed in. So this function will create the user's account and then sign the user in the same time. And but then we need to save their details on a separate table, like I told you before. Um, the user signs in and it appears here, but then we still need to get to file database and save the user details. I want to delete this. So this is the first one we created. So we, we need to save the user's details here too. Okay. Because um, this one has only, only four fields. All right. So um, we get back to our app. The user is currently logged out. I've created this button. How I created it was just to go to my login.html, go to where you have the forgot password button. This is the one we created in the past tutorial and created this button. So this is the button. This primary made it blue. You can go to any documentation and read the buttons. I will teach buttons in the next tutorial. So this guy primary made it blue. This full made it occupy the whole screen. And when it's clicked, this uh, function should be called. Remember in the past tutorial we used we we put this click function on click function on top of this class but I removed it and put it here so that it work only for this button and another click function will work only for this button. Then the next thing I did was to add a an icon. So I went to Ionic icons uh, and then got the Google Plus icon. I taught you icons in the beginning of this tutorial. You can do that by yourself then um, I, I type this text so when the user clicks this button this guy opens and this guy is inside the login.ts when we get to login.ts we'll see a google signing function that i've created inside that signing function we're just calling the user service and we're calling a function that we created inside the user service and then um, once the function finishes running we we do what we we create a toast a toast is a little notification that shows up at the bottom of your screen or at the top telling you that a um, creating user user account created successfully user account created successfully okay so the user will see this little notification i don't want to use a pop-up or a model like we did before i just want to use toast so this shows you that you have to import those controller we declare the variable in our constructor we declare the variable as a parameter in our constructor then we have a toast controller that's a type of the variable and inside ionic angular at the top of the page we imported toast controller along with other controllers okay so let's get to our user service and see what we actually did there right in our user service we created this function called Google sign in this function that is being called here this function we created it and call it Google sign in so we 
copied the provider and pasted we copied the ad scope and pasted we all got them from here this is the provider we copied this whole line pasted copy this one pasted and then we copied this one pasted with a little modification so here is the rest of the function that we copied and pasted but then before then we added a return because um, you can't just call this function if it doesn't return you have an error so this function must return a value all the functions inside your service or providers must re return a value so everything was copied the button but then inside there we did a little manipulation after the user has signed in this guy signs in the user remember we're using put with pop-up this guy signs in the user and um, what we want to do is let's delete this we want to make sure if the user signed in correctly if you have the user's details see what you will do save go to this location you remember we have um, user provide user profile dot child we declared it in our constructor right here where we have user profile should be a database it, it makes a reference to a database table called users so we're saying go to users add a user id that's what we're doing here go to go to users add a user id this user's id that you just created and then save the whole of these details there so create a field call it email save the user's email there create a field call it photo save the user's photo and so on and so forth but then we did one more thing inside here we said create a field call it name inside a field create another field call it first then enter this value call it middle enter this value the reason i did this was that um, google you know it's ret retrieving these details from your google account google plus account inside your google plus account you have your display name will be something like dave partner or dialogue. so as you can see there are spaces there and it's not broken down into first name middle name last name so um, when we're retrieving stuff like this we have to do a manipulation so it is saved in result.user.display so we want to split it according to um according to spaces so after they they will be the first one partner will be the second one and um, ozalo will be the third one okay so i just made it first name middle and last okay i use this javascript function called split to split it and then all of them became a, a an array that is saved inside rest so rest at zero will give you the first one and second one and third one so like this i was able to get my username complete and then this guy right so what we can do right now is to test our function we come to our app we are logged out we click on sign in. then this pop-up shows up this is a pop-up see what is happening yeah you know of course if it's your phone screen it will um, it will the pop-up will be within your phone screen remember immediately finished it logged us in but we didn't write any function for logging in so can you guess what happened um, if you come to if you come to app.ts remember app.ts in the beginning of this tutorial the very beginning of this video series we wrote a function that listens to on on old state change that is users login state so once a user is logged in it should make sure that the the the, log, the page is tabs so but if a user logs out it should make sure that the page is login page that is redirect the user to the login page so whenever a user is logged in um, we don't need to write any special function to redirect the user it just redirects by itself if the user is logged out it just redirects by itself okay so we just tested our app and it's working correctly and um, what we can do is to go and check our firebase and see what happened this is our user's table of Firebase. If you go to your Firebase, you click on Alt, that's how to appear on this page. Then you refresh. As you can see, we have a new name here called Dave Ozalo, and it's showing us that this guy registered through, through Google. And if I have, um, if I search Dave Ozalo, and I click search, it shows me this. So you can use this search to search for user 
here. Then the last thing we're going to check is the database to see if something was saved. And correctly, it saved a new variable, a new, a new profile that we called, it saved a new profile here. This is the user's ID because we told it to go to users and um, in user's ID, I'm talking about this function we have here, we're saying go to users, inside user's ID, save these guys. So let's see if the guys it saved. So it saved email, saved the URL for the profile picture. So automatically our users, we already have our user's profile picture, then save the username. Okay, then inside the names, it saved the first as this and the second as as a long partner all right so the last thing we want to do is to i want to explain this part to you why i have this inside every firebase function inside every firebase function like this this the word this keyword has a different scope you know normally what we should do this user profile is like this so what we should have done normally was this we should have used this dot user profile but it won't work because some um, firebase give gives this a different scope so what we'll do is go at the head of the file and declare var that equals to this or whatever you can just say var whatever equals to this so every time you see you have to use this you use whatever every time inside the firebase function okay so um that's it all right so in the next for the subsequent tutorials we may, we may look at github signing and then you have to figure out others for yourself and then we proceed okay thank you very much see you in the next tutorial don't forget to like and subscribe so that when next i make video tutorials you get the alert thank you